Welcome to The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. I'm Ken Ray. I'm Nicholas Raba. And I'm Nicholas Tachek. We have talked, man, for months now about various ways that you can keep yourself safe online. One of the things you've heard us say repeatedly is how much Apple does to make securing your data simple. I'm looking at you, File Vault. While Apple does a lot to make locking down your data doable, if not totally simple, they're walking a tightrope. I mean, they want to make computers and other devices safe, but they also want to make them easy to use. Now, they could make a tighter machine, sure, but that would make it less accessible to the average John or Jane. Now, we got to figure that you are neither the average John nor the average Jane, because you're listening to a security show. You understand that for today's Mac users, uh, security means more than relying on Apple and more than relying on the fact that there is no malware for the Mac because uh, that is no longer a fact if it ever actually was a fact. You understand that equipping your machine with the tools it needs to defend itself and protect your data is essential. I won't say this is bad news. I'll say um, the potentially overwhelming news is there are literally thousands of third-party apps out there meant to protect you and your data. Now, the good news is uh, the Nikolai, from whom you heard a moment ago, (laughs) have put together a list of security apps that they see as must-haves for any user. And so today's checklist covers those apps. Uh, Today we'll be hitting 1Password, Little Snitch, we'll hit some apps by Secure Mac, we'll hit some apps by Objective-C, and finally Little Flocker, I love that movie. Wait, no, sorry. Uh, Let's start uh, with number one on the list. That would be one password. All right. To get things going, we'll begin with a piece of software that makes one of the most common computer tasks infinitely easier for everyone to handle. That's password security. Uh, Basically, there are many password keeper, password management apps out there. Uh, But 1Password is a a winner in our book for not only its simple design, but highly secure functionality. Um, It it functions similarly to other password apps in that you can use it to remember all those passwords for all those accounts on all those sites. Uh, That can be really hard to keep track of you know, from day to day. Uh, 1Password replaces all those individual logins with one master password. Um, you remember your master password, and 1Password does the rest. It can you know, fill in those passwords. You can look them up. You can change them. Uh, it streamlines the entire process. Uh, it can even suggest strong passwords based on a criteria that you specify. So if a site says your password has to be 12 characters long and have one uppercase letter and one number and one symbol, you can actually set that up so the password created by 1Password is meeting that criteria and secure. Uh, So beyond the convenience that comes with 1Password, the the app itself is working really hard to keep your accounts safe from compromise. Uh, Basically... By only having to remember that one password, <laughs> I just realized a little bit of play on word there, um, <laughs> the master password for one password, the one that unlocks all the other passwords, that's you know certainly a convenience all on its own. Um, you're not remembering a dozen or two dozen separate passwords, you're only remembering one. Uh, but there's an approach with the security that comes with that master password. Uh, it, the master password keeps all of your other passwords secure in a local vault. Uh, one password can sync those passwords across all your devices that you have the program installed on. Um, if you want to keep them off the cloud, you can keep the, the vault only local. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, one password itself never uh, stores or even knows what the actual master password is. It, it uses um, standard 256-bit encryption uh, and brute force protection to keep the vault itself secure when it's at rest on your computer. Um, so it, it's one that we use, uh, we definitely recommend, and um, with 1Password, you can really say goodbye to those days of forgetting your passwords or writing them down insecurely on sticky notes um, and say hello to a convenient and modern way to securely log into your sites and um, basically keep your passwords safe and secure. Now, 1Password is, what it does is fairly self-explanatory just in the in the name of the product itself. Uh, I have no idea what item number two on the checklist uh, is, nor what it does. Uh, Talk to me about Little Snitch. 
At its core, Little Snitch, it's a small yet robust and powerful network monitor. The software is designed to give users both protection against undetected malware activity and better control over software connections. It also keeps a close eye on all your Mac's outgoing connections. Not just full of tools to let users monitor specific ports or check activity logs, Little Snitch also alerts users to any potential unwanted activity. By displaying information about what software wants to connect to and where, it, it basically makes it so you can make a more informed decision to control your privacy. The app even includes an assistant to aid you in understanding why some of the processes want to request web access. So why you need it. It's easy to think that if a program wants to connect to the web, it's doing so for a good reason and only would want to transmit crucial data. That's not always the case. Some apps might want to send a wide variety of system information and activity to some third-party server. Adware might do this to serve you some ads, or a program might simply be requesting information from an update server. Well, Little Snitch lets users see this activity up front rather than keeping it hidden. With this app, you could lock down leaky programs and keep them from phoning home. Better than that though, you'll quickly see when something that shouldn't need the internet wants to connect. And it could expose any malicious software trying to connect too. That makes it even more valuable for, for every user. The kind of cool thing with Little Snitch, uh, it's almost like a reverse firewall, where a firewall will block those incoming connections. Uh, Little Snitch can block the outgoing connections. When it's running, uh, by default, if it doesn't know uh, what connection is trying to be made, if it's from an app that it hasn't seen before, it'll alert you and allow you to decide whether or not you want to allow that connection to be made. Always allow it if it's an app you, you know, want working or block. So it, it gives you the control to decide what data is leaving your computer. Item three on the checklist. Um, I kind of want to do a, just like a little thing here really quickly. I've talked before on this show and on other shows about how I came to know um, Nicholas and Nicholas and how I came to know Nicholas and Nicholas is um, I was just impressed by something that they were doing. They uh, there was there was uh, some I want to say it was a malware or a vulnerability or uh, some sort. It's been a long time now, uh, but it made news in Mac circles. And and these guys came to my attention because they found a they found a tool that would spot that vulnerability, and then for free, they gave that tool. Uh, not only the tool for spotting it, but also the tool for eliminating it uh, out to anybody who wanted it. Uh, it struck me as a time that would be very easy to fear monger. I mean, it struck me as a time that would have been very easy for these two guys who knew something to say, hey, I know something. And for 10 bucks, for 15 bucks, for 30 bucks, I'll, I'll make you safe. Um, Nicholas and Nicholas uh, believe in what they do. And, and so... It's not surprising to me that they have a couple of products that they do think would be uh, must-haves for everyone else. And I, I guess I tell the story about how I came to know them because, I mean, what are we at? We're like at episode 21 now. I mean, they could have spent all 20 episodes before this saying, you know, what you need is me. And, and instead, what they tend to say is, what you need is knowledge. And so, um, yeah. Personally, I pay attention when they say, here's some of the stuff you need, even if some of the stuff they need <laughs> happens to be stuff uh, that they put out. So with that caveat, uh, item three on the checklist uh, are, are a couple of apps uh, by Secure Mac. Uh, uh, talk to me, uh, sirs, about, um, about which items you think are essential for people. Well, we have uh, a couple apps. Um, first up, we'll talk about MacScan 3. Uh, it is an all-in-one anti-malware solution for Mac computers. Um, whether using an iMac at home or a MacBook on the go, it offers a robust security options. 
It augments the built-in security features to your Mac um, and features much of what you'd expect to find in an antivirus program, including protection from the latest malware threats. Uh, we release updates on a, a very frequent basis to uh, detect those new pieces of malware that are coming out for Macs. Uh, also, a built-in malware knowledge base you can learn about those threats and the ability to fine-tune things such as uh, what cookies are allowed or not allowed uh, on your Mac so you can spe specify cookies that you always want to be removed or always want to keep so you're not losing your bank uh, cookies that keep you uh, able to log into your banking account without entering all that security information every single time, uh, but also while getting rid of those tracking cookies from advertisers. Uh, you know, the reason we consider uh, the app worthwhile um, is that it's it's protection for for your Mac. Um, there are more threats targeting Macs every year. Uh, we're we're seeing new ones every month. Uh, we're protecting against new ones. Uh, so with MacScan three, you can set things up so your computer is protected. You can set up scheduled scans to be checking your computer on a regular basis. Um, you can set it up to automatically clean cookies whenever you quit your web browser. Uh, we also frequently release security advisories, uh, letting you know when there are new threats out for your Mac, um, you know, what they can do, what you can do to protect yourself uh, in order to take a proactive approach to your security. Uh, we also have a, a different app, Privacy Scan, uh, a little bit different from Mac Scan. It focuses more on the data left behind by your web browser uh, when you surf the internet. Um, so your browsing history, cached images from websites you go to, um, saved form data, all those cookies, um, some of those those files that we talked about in a previous episode that are used to uh, uh, for for tracking purposes, super cookies. Um, so it, Privacy Scan will scan for supported apps, uh, supports the the major web browsers and and a few built-in apps for for Mac OS as well, and it will allow you to wipe those files that are left behind by your browser, kind of clear out anything that has. Uh, the potential to be ho holding on to some of your private information. Uh, and it gives you uh, a couple different options when it comes to removal. You can either just delete the file, um, you know, just get rid of it, or you can overwrite the file with random data. It's what we call the shredding feature. Uh, it can go up to the uh, U.S. Department of Defense specification uh, by overwriting the data uh, 35 separate times. It's above the, the specification, actually, I believe, seven times. Uh, and it'll basically make it so that your history files, your cookies, your cache files, they won't be able to be recovered when when you're uh, securely overwriting them like that. Uh, it can fill in the gaps that are sometimes left by browsers built in privacy functions, even when you're surfing with incognito mode or private browsing mode. In the past, uh, I believe almost all the major browsers have leaked data at one point or another uh, that can be recovered later on. So privacy scan takes the extra steps necessary to make sure that data you know, can't come back. Item number four on the checklist, and I guess it's kind of weird because we said it's a, it's a five-item list, except we just did two and number three, and now we're going to do more than one and number four. So, yeah, for fun at home, count along and see how many items are actually on the checklist by your figuring. Uh, but we'll say items number four on the checklist – uh, another family of applications, uh, apps by Objective C. Some vendors just create multiple apps that are just awesome. That would that would just make this list go way way longer in numbers. But <laughs> we kind of group them together there because because Objective C has a nice a nice website of all the different apps that they that they publish there. They're lightweight but powerful security products for Mac users. Among their numerous contributions to the field of security, most notable, knock knock, block block, ransomware, and the Dialib hijack scanner. Both knock knock and block block function as security tools. Looking for software attempting to install itself persistently. You could quickly receive an alert that something is trying to make a home on your machine. Ransomware monitors encrypted... <laughs> Wait, can we stop that for a yeah. second? Ransomware has a question mark at the end. So it, it, normally we say stay away from ransomware, but, but, but today we'll say ransomware <laughs> yeah and then and then you'll know that what we're talking about here is actually something that uh, that you may want to put on your machine 
I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to stress the question, Mark. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were so so ransomware. So ransomware, <laughs> in app, not an actual piece of ransomware, but <laughs> ransomware with the question mark. <laughs> it it's an app by Objective C. It monitors encrypted file creation to alert users to any suspicious activity that might occur when actual ransomware gains an initial foothold. Finally, Dilib Hijack Scanner probes vulnerable files on your computer to figure out whether any application has been compromised. So, needless to say, Objective-C, their development efforts are filling many gaps in Apple's security effort. By providing tools with increasing depth for monitoring your system, you could gain a much greater control over your security efforts. These apps cover an extensive range of potential infection vectors. Each of them is versatile enough for a power user while easy enough to operate that every user can benefit from them. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, I actually mentioned it in the open of the show, and you, you've really just hit it here again, um, saying Objective-C's development efforts are filling gaps in Apple's security efforts. Talk to me about that tightrope that Apple is walking. And I guess, I mean, if you want to do be a philosophy of security, I mean, you're security guys. So my assumption is you want every machine to be as tight as possible. Do you get the trades that Apple is making? I mean, heck, we even talked in the last show about a physical trade that Apple has made of, well, we want this to be thin, we want this to be light, we want this to be as attractive to the consumer as possible, so we're going to take away this thing that will let you physically lock your computer. Um, talk to me about the, about, the, about the security trades you see. I mean, if they made a machine as tight as they could possibly make it, would it be something the average consumer could or even would use? Uh, it, it really is a tightrope that they're walking. Uh, there are definitely things that, that Apple can do and that we as a security uh, in the security industry as a whole can do to make computer security more accessible for average users. Uh, the problem is, yes, there are lots of times that it would be um, appropriate to maybe show a security alert or to warn the user that they're doing something potentially insecure. The problem is that when you do that on a really regular basis, you're training a user to click accept or click cancel or click whatever button and not actually understand the ramifications of whatever is occurring on their machine. Um, there's a lot of it has to do with the wording of security dialogues. Uh, Apple has a uh, actually a, a guide for developers they publish on uh, secure coding practices, and they explain that that philosophy actually pretty pretty in depth. In that you need to make it. Uh, you know, I should say security vendors should need to make it um, as easy to understand for a user as possible for why whatever action may or may not be good, what would or would not happen if they click yes or no on this this um, dialog uh, box that pops up. It's it, it's really a balance though because if the the more you lock down a machine, the harder it is for uh, a user to get stuff done that they want to do. They just want to check their email. They just want to watch Netflix. Um, so it's really up to the vendors to to kind of go behind the scenes as much as possible to make things secure without ever having to interrupt the user's workflow or bother them with questions they might not understand. Um, uh, so, I mean, Apple does a really admirable job, um, but it's definitely... Um, you know, there's, there's room for improvement for, for everybody in the industry, um, but it really is a balancing act of, of making making it understandable uh, as well as secure. I got to figure that if you're a developer or if you're a vendor like Apple or a major software vendor, um, you both want to. I mean, you, you kind of want to make. I would say you kind of want to make security practically invisible, but not completely invisible, because if it's completely invisible then you don't know the difference between using a, a secure device and a device that's just, you know, sort of Wild West open to whomever. Um, it really it really is fascinating to think about the tightrope that they're walking. But uh, we ourselves are walking on to uh, item number five, the final item on the checklist, Little Flocker. 
Well, this next app, um, I guess I'll preface this by saying this is probably at this point for more advanced users, um, just because it's a newer app and um, still kind of working things out as far as initial configurations go. But uh, it does give users an incredibly robust protection from some serious threats, including rootkits and ransomware. Um, what Little Flocker is, um, is a lower layer uh, level of security. Uh, it's kind of like a firewall, um, kind of like Little Snitch, kind of why the naming convention is, is a little similar there. Uh, instead of blocking um, you know, network data, it's blocking file access. So whereas something like Little Snitch is you know, checking those outbound connections, this is checking uh, and, and asking for your permission before whatever can happen. Uh, Little Flocker is the same thing for your files. It will require your consent before something can access or modify a file on your system. Uh, it can also do some other stuff like watch for access to your webcam, microphone, keyboard data, uh, and then any attempt by a program on your system to access those devices or capture that data would show an alert and ask for your permission. Uh, you can set up uh, I guess you can set it so a, a program is trusted so that it won't always be asking you for permission. Uh, but if a program is untrusted or unknown, it can provide an early warning system against new emerging malware threats, ransomware threats. Uh, it, it meshes with the system kernel, which is um, really you know, the lowest, lowest level security, um, uh, providing really good protection against stuff like rootkits, um, uh, you know, uh, key loggers, stuff like that. Uh, but it also has substantial capabilities for monitoring files at higher levels too. So, you know, if you download a new program and you go to open it and you find out it wants to read your keychain for some sensitive day and you're like, hey, wait a second, why does this game want this information? You can stop that access. Uh, it'll definitely have an impact uh, with helping to stop malicious malicious uh, attacks on your system. However, with the initial configurations, um, I guess let me back this up a second. Little Snitch has been around for a really long time, and they've got a really robust set of, um, I guess, preset rules for apps that are known to be benign. And like, yes, iTunes needs to access Apple servers, so that is never, you know, it's not going to bother you asking for that connection information. Um, Little Flocker uh, does have some um, situations still where where some apps won't work if it's enabled. Um, so. I think as the, the app is developed more and as it goes along, uh, some more robust rule sets put in place, it will definitely be a, a very valuable tool. Um, at this time, again, probably for more advanced users, but uh, in those cases, definitely a good tool to have in your arsenal. About the only thing, um, just for clarification, when you say the lowest level of security, you don't mean like practically not having security. You mean drilling down as deep as it can. Yeah, I, I guess I could have also phrased that as like you know the highest level of security. It's it's the 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 root of your the root account. We've discussed that before um, with rootkits. Uh, it's the files that are running um, that require the most permissions to access or change stuff in your system. The the lowest level in the sense that everything else is running on top of it. Mm. Um, it's your your core your bedrock of security, if as it were. So now, of course, the question for everybody listening. Uh, did you write down every one of those apps and why you need each one? If not, fear not. You can see the list and check show notes for today's show and every show uh, on the show's site at securemac.com slash checklist. That uh, website, again, is securemac.com slash checklist. Is there an app that we didn't mention that you swear by or an app that you're not sure is worth it now? Or maybe you have a question you'd like to ask us about another topic or maybe a topic you'd like to hear us hit. Uh, we do have an email address where you can do that. That email address is checklist at securemac.com. That address again, checklist at securemac.com. And if you don't remember that, please remember this. You are listening to The Checklist by Secure Mac. And we'll talk to you next week. Next week.